Now, do you have you ever gotten any opposition, or do you get any opposition from your your friends or your family uh, when they hear your your recordings? Do they ever say, "Oh man, come on, you're soft now," or "Hey man, <laughs> you know why why are you preaching to me, man? You know I can go to church and get preached to." You, you ever get any of that that feedback, that negative feedback? As you might guess, I get drama from all sides, man. Um, anytime you do anything for Christ. Christ said it best. Follow me as I follow uh, God and you will be crucified. You, you will be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you will be chastised. You will be hated upon. You know what I mean? Whatever he went through, you're going to go through. You apply that same message. If we're followers of Christ, they're going to do us like they did Christ. And we all know eventually they hung Christ, man. When he was doing this ministry, he had people that followed him wholeheartedly want to know more about his ministry, but then you had the church that was against him, man, you know what I'm saying, that was running at them, saying, well, this ain't how we did it, we've been doing it like this for years at a time, and now you're going to come brand new on the scene, man, I remember when you was a little infant, now you're going to tell me you God, I know you, I know your mama, you know what I mean, so they didn't want to accept that message, I went through the same crap, man, I'm still going through the same crap, um, when I first started, people that knew me from the streets, they was like, man, you know what I mean, we know you and you know all of a sudden you're gonna do a 360 man I'll give you this amount of time before you fall and mess up you know what I mean my own grandfather told me man this is just a spell a season you're going through I done been that route you know what I mean it don't work and you're gonna end right back up here with me you know what I mean with no faith etc um, then I had to catch that accepted the message you know what I mean catch that feel the spirit or they going through a situation at that time and they feel the realness they feel the presence of God and they say man you gotta keep doing this you know what I'm saying um, I've literally saved souls through this ministry, man. I count two uh, for sure that I actually seen come to Christ. Uh, one of them I walked through, actually two of them I walked through hand in hand up to the throne, man. So they gave their lives to Christ. And both of these young men are still saved. One of them went on to become like a minister, man. And he's out saving souls. So you do see the fruits of God come to pass um, when you do this ministry. Um, at the same time, and I can't say I really got a whole handful of it. Thankfully, other people have done it before me, so it's a little bit smoother. But because my message is a little bit more raw, I have come into the hate part of it. You know what I mean? Um, when I let my auntie first hear it. Now, your family's going to support you for one for, because they're your family. But you're going to get the realness, too, that you won't get from the average fan because they know your family. Um, originally, when she heard it, she was like, well, I'm going to check it out and I'll get back to you and let you know what I think. So, time came around, she hadn't contacted me, so I contacted her and said, well, Auntie, what you think about the album? And she was like, well, it's cool, but I don't know, I, I can't listen to vocal music or, you know, cursing and whatnot. And so, I mean, I couldn't do nothing but laugh, you know what I mean, because she was obviously more traditional, man. My aunt, I ain't going to give her her age away, but let's just say she was taught hip-hop and God don't go together. But, um... When she, when she responded to me, I was hurt a little bit, but I wasn't shocked because I knew hip-hop wasn't a style of music, first of all. And any slang you might throw out there, traditional people, they, they just, you know, they, they cringe up, man. They kind of back away from it because they don't really understand it. But I walked her through each, each lyrical um, context and, and exactly what it meant. And I said, well, I'll tell you, listen to it again. You know what I'm saying? You believe that I'm an anointed man of God, right? She had no choice but to say, yeah, because, I mean, that's what it was. That's what it is. And uh, she said, okay, well, I'll give another shot. She sat down, listened to it, and went through the whole CD. She realized I had not used not one curse word, not one vulgar uh, term or anything that, that might offend God or the kingdom of Christ. But the thing people have a problem adjusting with is that I'm not a church member that decided to start making music. I'm an average kid from the streets who got saved and has a testimony to relay back to the cats that's still in the street. So you're going to get that terminology. Um, one particular instance, I was invited out to Rocky Mount. And that was just recently, who were not exposed to holy hip hop at all, man. I mean, it's, it was 2009, I believe, when that jumped off. And these cats still hadn't heard of holy hip hop. So that's letting you know somebody's not doing their job. Yes. According to the Bible, Satan has control of the money. So it's going to be a little bit difficult for us to get some territory. But we serve a mighty God. You know what I'm saying? 
The same God that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The same God that made Solomon rich. You know what I mean? It's the same God that can do miracles today. And I know God already promised where we were going to be with this label. That God has got to do something major to provide the platform and the access for Holy Hip Hop to become major. We got to get those radio stations. You know what I mean? We got to get those video channels. We got to get those award shows and not the rinky dink underground stuff that you get on local channels. But I'm talking major with big budgets. So all you millionaires out there that claim that you're Christians, all you mega churches and whatnot, don't spend your money on, on, on Lexuses and Beamers and a bunch of crap, man. Put that money back into the kingdom where it belongs so that holy hip hop in any genre of gospel or any ministry can be where the world can have access to them. You know what I'm saying? But um, with that said, I brought the message to Rocky Mount for the first time and they were blown away. Now, the pastor of this church, you know what I'm saying, bless his heart, good friend of mine, he had, um, I want to say, a mother of the church. You know how they got the elders of the church and you got the, the mother of the church. Well, he told me, you know, he whispered a little bit in my ear and he said, well, I got to be honest with you, don't really expect her to jump on it because she has been against holy hip-hop from day one. She just believes there's no way holy hip-hop can, uh, hip can be holy because we all know hip hop has such a dirty, uh, negative reputation. But when I got up there, I'm not one to just jump up there and entertain. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not going to get that from me. Now believe, you're going to get entertainment. You're going to get your money's worth. You're going to get a show. You're going to be able to bounce to it. You're going to be able to vibe with it. But for me to get up there and not let the Holy Spirit have his way would be ungodly. Then you could consider me a false prophet. You know what I mean? And that's not me. So before I get into any song, you know what I'm saying, or, or any segment, I'm going to the scripture. So bring your Bible, you know what I'm saying, I'm not ashamed of that, and there ain't no way around that, you know what I'm saying, anybody can party and get their groove on, but then when you die and you go to hell, I mean, was it worth it, did you have fun, you know what I mean, you, you need some essence. So after I got done preaching, I actually, I did about four hours just preaching, just nothing but me, the Bible, the Holy Spirit. The audience, man. I had them all I had them printed out sheets and documents for them for everybody that didn't bring their Bible. By the time I got finished and went into that song, do you know the mother of that church was getting her bounce on, man. <laughs> <laughs> she was having a good time, man. After the show, she laid hands on me, my wife, my whole organization, and said, may God bless you in this ministry and see that you go forth. Now, this is from a lady who hated hip-hop with all she had. But you cannot deny what God has put his stamp of approval on by sending that Holy Spirit. You had Paul go through the same instance when he attempted to present salvation to the Gentiles. Everyone knew salvation was for the Jews. But when, when the Holy Spirit put that stamp of approval on Paul and sent him out to the Gentiles, people didn't want to receive that message. But once they saw the Holy Spirit come from heaven, and drop on those people, they had to leave Paul alone. Because they knew God's step of approval was on that. You know what I mean? So I, I done seen just about every reaction to holy hip hop out there, man. But like I say, man, um, y'all got a problem. That's y'all. <laughs> you can quote me on that. You know what I mean?